What's up? Michael Gavin here. You're my mechanic, tuner of hearts and minds one at a time. So your ideas do not die in your heart's head, your hard drives. Uh, today's mind tune-up time is brought to you by Michael Gavin, the mind mechanic. <laughs> so we appreciate our sponsors here today. Uh, anyway, it's like to be playful, but uh, you can join mind tune-up time. If you're catching this after the fact when it's not live, you can go to mindtuneuptimelive.com. And you can register for the Zoom or join the Facebook group. It's streamed in the Facebook group. And uh, usually by end of day Thursday, it is uploaded to uh, YouTube and podcasts. And there's show notes there so you can see what happened uh, at certain timestamps. It's great. It's great. I got an incredible person. She's hearing this right now. And uh, who, who does that? So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I want to talk about the topic. And if you got questions, uh, there's a QA and a box here. I'm going to jam on this. Come on here. The best thing that I love about doing it live um, is, uh, the interaction, but I, I, more than just interaction amongst each other in the chat or say yes. And thank you. <clears throat> I like questions. I like something to be sparked conversation because to me, I can talk to everybody or I can talk to somebody. And, uh, to me, when I talk to somebody, I talk to more bodies than if I try to talk to everybody, if that makes sense. And so uh, Marty's asking the, the daily jump starts. So I, they're, just, they're just 15 or less minutes usually. I've uh, been doing it on Facebook right now. I haven't released them anywhere else yet. They're getting all ready so that uh, probably in the next couple of weeks here, uh, they'll be coming out on autopilot Monday through Friday in the morning every day and uh, excited to, uh, to do that. So today's topic this idea, when does it, when does this work? So this work, mind tune up time. I mean, this ain't, this, this ain't, this ain't cartoon up time. This ain't uh, uh, marketing tune up time. This ain't writing tune up time, drawing tune up time, video tune up time, you know, editing tune up time or any other tune up time. It's mind tune up time, right? So when do you got to stop tuning up your mind? Like when, it, when is you complete? Now this is not me because I'm selling something saying what I'm going to say. This is what I really believe to be the truth. Whether you come to me on these calls, you self-coach yourself, you read more book, whatever it is, there's a level where I don't believe it ever is complete. Like, when do you not ever, I mean, depend, I don't know how y'all want to live. That's fine. I mean, I know I go a day or two with what I'm about to say from time to time for sure. When do you not need to shower anymore? Like, when do you not need to eat anymore? When do you not need to drink anymore? When do you not need to sleep anymore right now some people go a few days without sleeping some people go a few days without eating people go a few days without taking a shower right it, it's not that you you are not gonna not do those things from time to time and skip you're gonna bum it out like let me see if i can stand up here right see that i don't even like to call them bum pants <laughs> but they comfy pants i love it I love wearing these and I love wearing them the majority of the time. There's a guy, multimillionaire, it's his name Townsend something. He's in this uh, ultimate coach group in the ultimate coach world. And uh, that guy has, uh, he, he started a trend called Tracksuit Thursday, but ultimately he, he, for the most part, is tracksuit every day. He don't matter if he's going in to be some billionaires or millionaires and they're all dressed to in super fancy suits, he shows up in his tracksuit. And I love that because I believe that by and large, a lot of us are putting on makeup, doing our hair, wearing clothes a certain way. Yeah, it makes us feel better. I get that. But there's also like all different various of things and we like it. it it's not all what I'm going to say, but a lot of times it can be. You think that if, if you were going to go right now in a room full of millionaires, could you walk in in some comfy clothes? Still get the client? or get the job, or get done whatever needs to be done in that room, get investor money, whatever you'd be doing, right? Now, there's an appropriateness. I get it. This is not like just because then, but this, where does this come from? Where does this trashiness saying, I don't be trashy. I don't be this. It's all coming from judgments. It's all coming from judgments and that we have to be a certain way in certain things. And it's wrong if you don't do X, Y, or Z. And so what I found is, is that particular person is like no different than a person buying a camera that they can, they'll get higher paying clients, right? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but it ain't the camera that's the reason why it does or doesn't. It's the person. So there are people who, they are done up 
in every way, shape, and form, no matter who you are, to the top. And they still don't really feel confident. They still don't really believe in themselves. They still don't believe in what they have. So the person who you would look in a room and they're full of millionaires and they're all dressed in suits and there's a guy in a track suit and he's still able to convince these people of something or inspire these people to move or to action or to do something, it quite frankly didn't necessarily have anything to do with what that person was wearing. It was who they were being, what they were thinking. And all of that led to what they were doing. But that presence, that energy, I, you know, people who said things about my energy for years. And for years, I had no clue. I had no clue what they were really talking about. You think batteries have like energy? And I know that there's, there's high energy. This is what we associate, right? I talk really fast and I'll do this. And I'm like, Ooh, I'm high energy right now. Oh man, I'm real, I'm real low energy. Hey everybody. No, I'm not feeling real good today. Kind of low energy. Hey everybody, I'm really low energy today. And I really, really low energy, right? Like it's a word that we give meaning to no different than we have created situation, circumstances, uh, things in our mind that say, if we go into this environment, I need to be like this. If I go into this environment, I need to be like this. What happens if who you were being didn't matter what environment you were in or who you were going to be with, but you were able to show up powerfully, right? And so- this mind tune up aspect, when does it end? When do we, when do we reach a level where we no longer have to do something? To me, it's a practice. The world is always changing. We are always changing. Like there is a lot, like the one constant in this world is change. Even when you believe nothing's changing, everything is always changing the cells in your body, this hair fall out of your head, it's always growing, right? Like there's all these things that are always changing. And so there's that aspect where I believe it's like showers, everything else. There's a practice. Now there's things we don't get, we don't embody yet because we haven't practiced it enough. But even once you start to not have it be an issue, it doesn't mean that you no longer continue to practice and continue to grow. So I think that there's a, there's a I think Ro, Tony Robbins used to say, can I, constant never ending change. Right? And there's this aspect that we are going to continually evolve and looking to reach a place where, you know, uh, Hardison had this quote about, um, that I've seen, I don't know if it was his or not, but you know, the, the only difference between uh, the master and the student is the master knows that he you know, never is, is always the student, he's always learning. And I think to think that we're ever gonna reach something where we no longer need to grow or learn or evolve or that we're better than other people is the moment that you start dying. Improvement, there we go. What did I say? Constant never ending change, constant never ending improvement. Yes, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> There's a flow zone moment where I, I lost track of it. All right. So that's a simple thing. I, I, I can beat that into the ground for the next 30 minutes. We can get on here today. Good chunk of my, my uh, normal crowd, some new faces or some new names on here as well. What's something I can help you out with today? How can I, how can I be of service? How can I help? How, what was something that you need that if I could answer for you particularly, um, it'd be a game changer. It'd be super helpful. It would help move the needle. Um, hello, Linda. Who else on here? Deidre. What up? What up? What up? What up? Is that the same? Gosh, dang it. Hold on. I got to see something here. It is. You got different things going on in different places. It always gets me confused sometimes. That's my D. That's my D. That's my D on the FB. <clears throat> Holy smokes. Deidre Aldridge, D, I mean, you're public, so I mean, you got your page public. Might as well have people go check you out, right? You got to go to D-T-H-E-A Aldridge, Ald, R-I-D-G-E. Go to her Facebook. I don't know how you, how you find her in regards to any more than that, but go check her out. And the Facebook she, live she did at the point of recording this on February 1st is fire. There has been a fire lit 
inside of her. Holy smokes. <laughs> Definitely go check it out. I uh, loved, loved her inspiration, her intensity, her energy, uh, her conviction, her commitment uh, to showing up in all her glory, in all of who she is. And I think that there's, there's something inside of all of us, but so many of us have um, for, the, for the, the fear of being too much. In fact, I, I got to say that too as well. I, I think this is, this is powerful. So I'm going to say this on this group because D, D said this. There's different resonance for everybody. Uh, if you're listening to this right now, I can leave the comment. But if you're live, uh, let me actually grab it real quick right here uh, on Facebook. Tell them Michael Gavin sent you. A lot of you have heard me talk about Steve Hardison and um, The Ultimate Coach. And there's a book called The Ultimate Coach that I've shared before. But if you're not already, um, let me grab a link here for just a second. It, you know, I honestly don't know why I didn't do this more sooner. But I didn't. Copy link, Zoom, chat. So if you're listening to recording somewhere, it's the Ultimate Coach um, Facebook group. The Ultimate Coach Facebook group. And, and, and basically one year, period, not one year, uh, at the point of recording this, it is uh created eight weeks ago so two months ago two months ago and there have been 375 people added in just the last week but 4,707 people in there in two months 61 posts a day 2,000 posts basically 1937 in the last month and it's been so inspiring there, there's there's a man named eric who's taken charge of of uh being the main the, the, the main moderator the main admin and he's got other people helping him but it's something that I've observed that I, being who I have been in the past with Facebook groups and things and, 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 and energetically just not wanting to spend the time or energy. Like I, I love auditory. So I love connecting with people where I can hear their voice rather than just see their words. Um, but I've always wanted to create this safe space, but because I didn't want to do the work and then I wasn't enrolling people to help me do the work, all this other stuff. You know, I've had little bits and pieces of things, but not to the degree that I've seen this, but stands for the same thing, which is a safe place to share. And the reason I bring that up is because D was in that group and connected with somebody. There's such a wide variety of people who are learning about their state of being and are connecting with people who are loving, caring, compassionate, and empathetic. And there's no pitching, there's no selling, they're being phenomenal at moderating, and it's grown like wildfire. And I couldn't even imagine you know, creating my own thing like that right now. I just want to turn people onto that because I think it's really inspiring. It's really encouraging. Um, and it's being led how I could have imagined that if I was being a person who um, effectively, yeah, I just, it's, it's not my sweet spot right now in my life. And uh, I just highly suggest that anybody like my Facebook group right now, um, I mean, quite frankly, I turned it into more of a place for me to be able to, um, to share what I'm doing here, but I didn't want to manage it and, and that affects it. And this is being managed super well. It's growing like wildfire. People are sharing, being vulnerable and, and expanding, um, in powerful ways. So I, uh, am currently continuing to surround myself and get people. This is just transparency for all of you. Um, something I'll probably go deeper into this because I'm wanting to research more. Uh, ADHD came up and then I made a post about it. I think I had a couple hundred comments between a few different places that I posted it and uh, different feedback from different people, some private messages and, and seeing a similar trend, um, which is by and large people who have what I would call a flow zone. Um, they, they flow, they have a zone, they have a zone of genius, a sweet spot that it's just effortless and time evaporates. And anybody who's been on more than one call, you are observing mine. Because I believe, you know, we're all hybrids. None of us are, if you're taking cars, none of us are all gas or all electric. We're all hybrids. Uh, but 
we lean in one direction or another or have a high blend of both. So what I say that is really high tendency towards introversion, extroversion, or high blend of both. But we all have both in us, whereas a Tesla cannot power it all off gas, right? So we all have a blend in us, but some of us lean in one direction or another. So for me, by and large, uh, you see it right here. What you see is what you get. So if I'm not on camera being recorded in public and something like this, you know, where I get into the flow 99% of the time is when I'm speaking on the phone, on Boxer, on Zoom, in a group, private, group online, group offline, private online, private offline. It doesn't really matter. But when I am speaking, that is when I am in the most time evaporates. Time flies by and I am in the flow. And, you know, to do things like this, jump on the phone, all of that, I never procrastinate on that ever. Now, there's people who are my polar opposite who would procrastinate all day, every day on getting on Zoom, getting on live, getting on phone conversation with people, uh, getting in front of a group and talking. Like, that's not necessarily their first go to thing that they would like to do. Doesn't mean they don't like people, doesn't mean they can't connect with people, doesn't mean they can't interact with people. But bringing the group back up, which ties us back in, people who tend, not always, but tend from a natural state of being to be and identify more with introversion, i.e. they can type all day long and, and connect more with people via text message, via email, via text on a screen in Facebook. And that is the primary mode of operandis where they feel most comfortable, most in the flow, most in the zone. You know, my wife is great in that, in that aspect. And then are other ways with her hands and creating crafts and art and design and things that may not be texting or typing to people, but that is her mode of operandis, but she is the opposite of me. So here's the thing. It comes this whole ADHD thing. You got to recognize where your flow zone is, where you get in. And, in, and I want to tell you, I'm not an expert on this by any stretch of imagination. I actually, I think to my advantage, don't know ton, like haven't researched it a ton personally. I know the, the surface level observation, know that the likelihood from what I could self-diagnose most definitely have it. Um, but in regards to like heavy, like study and expertise and all that on it, no. Uh, and sometimes I think that can be a blessing and a curse because the less sometimes people know, depending on how you're wired, the more you'll act. So I was talking to Mr. Mark here this morning, talking about like Academia and a lot of youth, when people are younger, don't get around people who instill an impossibility. And, and people, let's say just ADHD, this idea that it is a curse, it is a bad thing, it is a hindrance. If that's what you're told from people at a young age who don't understand it and, and, and feel as though it has hindered them in life, then you will likely view it through a lens and filter of it's a hindrance. It's not something to support you or help you. So that aspect that if you were to find people early on in, in, in your youth that either one, you didn't bring it up and you were just taking action and doing things. Oh, this is just what I do. Or you're told, Hey, you know, people have said to you that, you know, you need to get more in line. You need to fit in the box. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to fit in the box of people who are at the top in business. A lot of them have ADHD or a lot of them are dyslexic. You know, these things that are looked at at times as negatives to them, they have used and created and, 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 and become a superpower, right? And so there's that aspect where, one second here for a second, uh, one second, pause some file. Okay. You got it. Um, so what happens is that Once you identify where you're in the zone, where you just time evaporates, and then you recognize, okay, especially anybody who wants to be self-employed, entrepreneur, have their own business, do their own thing, and not be employed somewhere where the likelihood is, if you've found some form of good employment, you're in your zone of genius. You're in your flow zone. You're in your sweet spot. And all these other little things that need to be done are being done by other people. But when you do not know 
how to get help from other people or you're not getting support or you can't afford it in your mind, et cetera, et cetera. You go to do your own thing. There's going to be a sweet spot. And then there's likely other things that need to be done. And I find the people who do the best at getting it all done without help tend to be more hybrids. Meaning they lean in either direction fairly easy. They could be super extroverted, talk to people, bah, 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 no problem, get on the phone, do that. And then they can get really detail-oriented and they like it. We can all do these things, but there's things we're going to, time evaporates and there's things that time stands still and we don't want to do it. And we procrastinate, we waste time and we get stuck, right? And so I find that hybrids get the least stuck. If they don't get stuck, they get the least stuck because they can operate very powerfully in both areas. Could we all become this? I'm not saying we can't. For me, uh, we'll see what happens, quite frankly. I'm not saying anything is impossible or improbable, but for my life up until what I know today, I know that I have still had tendencies, even when I've shifted my way of being, my way of thinking, these things, I still lean towards one direction, which is typically that what you see here in any form or vehicle that I could do it is my flow zone. Then when I get to things where I'm typing people, sending emails, trying to organize things, look at data, all of that. If I start to do that, I get distracted easily. So I can do it for 10 minutes and let me look at my phone. I can do it for five minutes. Let me look at my phone. Let me do this. Let me go do something else. Like I, I don't focus very well. I can do it and I can get it done. But what might've take a person who that's their flow zone, that they love it, that they really want to do it. Maybe it, takes them 10 minutes and they're done. Boom, boom, done. You know, 20 minutes or whatever it is. Uh, but that same thing for me is going to take four hours and, and takes 20 or 30 minutes longer if you just could delete the time and look at the actual time I was productive. But it takes me this whole time of distracted time because I'm never really focused on it because for me, it's not my, my zone of genius, not my flow zone. And so in recognizing that, I've said, we got to EDC it. Eliminate, delegate, or collaborate. And I am, am, am relearning. I've done versions of this before, but I, I had no practice behind it. I had nothing to look at. I just kind of would do it haphazardly. But now I see how important that if I'm going to stay in my flow zone and I know what that is, and there's certain things I want to do that involve too many activities outside of that zone, if they can't be eliminated, meaning they have to be done, then I got to delegate it. Collaboration and delegation can kind of go hand in hand, but to me, uh, it, it kind of depends. I think a collaborations is like, you know, a collaboration to me on certain levels could be if I, if some of you heard of like full-time filmmaker. So they have a lot of technical training, not any really mindset training. So to me, if I want to offer that stuff, but that's not my zone of genius, then I can collaborate with them and they have things that I don't have and I have things that they don't have and vice versa. And we, but we both are successful in our own route on our own, um, in our own ways and we can collaborate together. Now it can be looked at as I'm delegating certain things to somebody else who already does it. But I look at delegation a lot more as um, uh, I'm not working with somebody who's already really successful in business at something. I'm getting a specific thing done, <coughs> excuse me, by someone, <coughs> excuse me. So, right, if I don't know how to design, let's say thumbnails for YouTube videos. If I don't know how to design, don't want to design, whatever it is about not getting that. <coughs> Holy cow, everybody, <coughs> I got some in my throat. <coughs> excuse me. Maybe I am getting distracted. <laughs> so, if I, I wouldn't look at it, I'm, I mean, it, again, it's kind of twofold, but I wouldn't look at that as I collaborate with somebody. I find a specific person who does that thing and get them to do that for me, right? Um, and so it, it's a fine line there, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, <clears throat> like I said, um, that's how I kind of view that. So when you, thanks, Norman's always telling me, <coughs> I just got, I haven't drank any water. No nasal stuff today. <sighs> All right. God dang, God dang. 
Um, so that's been really powerful for me because I've recognized, for example, if you take my Your Daily Jumpstart or you take these sessions, these sessions, whoever in the moment is on these sessions, so whatever that is for you, it, it, if you're running your business right now, and you find there's areas you're in the zone and there's areas that you can't ever seem to get in the zone and you procrastinate. If you can figure out how, is that really necessary to do? If it, if it is a necessary component to success and there's not another way around it, not another way of something you can stay in the flow, my thing is, can we eliminate it? If we can't, can we delegate it? That way the goal is no matter what, you stay in your zone the majority of the time. That's when we talk about energy, you're gonna have the most energy because if you spend too much time out of that zone, it's when you're the least productive, you're the, probably the most frustrated, the most unfulfilled. Like there's so much negative typically associated with uh, doing all the things outside of your zone of genius. When there's, you know, an aspect uh, or a concept that was talked about by a man, uh, Dan Sullivan and Dean Jackson called Who Not How. School taught everybody how to do things. And they really programmed and wired people's minds to believe that they have to, to learn how to do everything. If there's something that needs to be done, you want it done right, you do it yourself or you learn how to do it. You need to know how to do it, right? But there's an ask, you know, a concept now of who can do it. And when we start to look for who, sometimes we're the who. Other times there's somebody else. That's their zone. And in the world that we live in with the amount of uh, connection that we have to find people who are in their zone, now, not everybody knows this, what their zone is, but there are people who do. And when you can collaborate, delegate to people who are in their zone, it's so much more fun. It's so much more fulfilling. I've had such a weight. My next step, I've been doing these Your Daily Jump Starts. My next step is ultimately when I get done recording, have folders in Dropbox. Uh, Linda's on here today. Everything else that I've been messing with uh, with the people who I've been delegating to get things done, I won't even have to do that because I'll have one person who will then take care of the rest of that. That's going to allow me more time out of the day to be in my zone because I know that I haven't recorded certain content. I haven't done certain things because at times I'm like, truly, I go, what's the, I go, what's the point? And I know that in my heart, tuning up hearts and minds, one, one, at a time would be a lie with what I'm about to say. But I also recognize the, 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 the dry rain, the two truths at one time. It doesn't make one less true than the other, which is if I do stuff on Facebook like this right now, it's being live streamed into a group and it's on here and there's 12 people. And I go, well, all that matters to me right now is the people on here. And quite frankly, with this, which is why I do live things, is that I'm satiated, I'm satisfied, I'm excited if nothing happens beyond this. But I know, and, he, and I've known this before, and now because I'm looking for it, I'm hearing more, and I'm finding you know, confirmation bias towards this, which is, but when I leave the Zoom, nobody else is going to, like, Nobody, if it wasn't on live on Facebook and still lives there, as soon as this Zoom is over, not another soul directly from this content, as in being able to hear me and see me, would ever benefit from it again. The only people who benefit, and then the ripple of those people is the people who are on here. But I know the power of YouTube, but I know that there's steps and things for that power to be utilized. And those things are things I understand. I know I see the power in but I know it's not my zone and I know that I might get excited and I'll do it for a few weeks. Then I get bored with it because it's not really my zone. I don't really want to be doing that, which is uploading titles, tags, descriptions, doing research. What would be the best thing to title this? So it gets found like all these different little things that need to be done versus uploading and keep it unlisted or uploading it and not giving it any title besides the date or uploading it and just calling it mind tune of time, right? Because YouTube is a search engine. So if you create the right titles and the right descriptions, people can search and they can find your content. Just as I've seen in my own life and been confirmed from others, I just had somebody I know, John, Sean Cannell, he's like, 
His most viewed videos from 2021 were videos from 2019 and 2020. Not because of their collective views, just the views that a video got. So it maybe it got 100,000 views in 2019. And now it has 400,000 views. So 100,000 views in 2019, 400,000 views now. But 300,000 of those views came in 2020. Or excuse me, 2021. Excuse me. Some version of that, right? So that aspect that this thing that was created a few years ago still was impacting people for him with AdSense and other things, still making him income. So I know that I have great things here that I create. You have great things that you create, but there's certain places. Either you write in notes on your computer and you're writing a novel, but the thing, you, oh, I don't know how to publish it. Where would I publish it? And where would I get a book cover? And where would I do this? Right, whatever it is, plug it into you. What is your art? What is your craft? What is your service? What are you doing? Where is your sweet spot? Where is your flow zone? Where is that time that you, when you spend that time, what is that that you do? The time evaporates. But for you to have major success with it, how many other things at times, again, depending on who you are, how you're wired, how many other things do you find there's lots of resistance, lots of baggage? I believe there's lots that can be eliminated. And we're trying to do things and we're spending time on things that aren't in our zone and they don't even need to be done. I just did a post about that. You do not need a best-selling book. You do not need a large following. You do not need, you do not need, you do not need a lot of things that people tell you need to succeed, right? So depending on what you're doing, right? But if you love creating content as in coming up with concepts and things and then recording them, but when it comes to marketing it, promoting it, uploading it, doing all these other things with it, you just can never seem to get into it. Well, if it's all done on your hard drive, again, this is tuning up hearts and minds so ideas don't die in hearts, heads, and hard drives. If it's on your heart, if it's in your hard drive, right? If it's in your head, that's fine. There's things that can stay there. I'm not saying everything needs to be publicized or brought to the world, but there's a lot of times where some degree, it doesn't even have to be always online. But sometimes you're going to have to make that call to somebody. You're going to have to email somebody. You're going to have to knock on the door for somebody. Like it depends on what you're attempting to accomplish. But there are things that if you're not willing to do it, you don't always have to do it at all. But if it somewhat has to be done, you can't find another way and you're not willing to do it and it has to be done, then you've got to figure out. Who's in their zone of genius? Who could you collaborate with? Who could you hire? I've been using Fiverr a lot. For a lot of tasks, Fiverr is really affordable because quite frankly, some things are order-taking tasks. Meaning I don't need a hyper-intelligent, super sophisticated you know, person with experience for 18 years that's gonna cost me $5,000 to do something that could be done for 50 bucks. And that person can do it in 25 minutes and, you know, make it $25 an hour. Good for them. Right. But I don't need to pay the other person $2,500 an hour just because they've been doing it for like, that's where the world is changing. Some people are in career paths where you keep doing what you're doing. Like you're just going to get wiped off planet earth. Right. Like, you know, and, and there are industries, there are things like that. And I know we got Tashina on here. She's evolving with the way she's getting into the metaverse. She's getting an NFT. She's doing these different things. Um, but she's not only doing it because of the future. She's doing it because she's also excited about it. It's another form for her to connect, for her to network. Um, so there's really no right or wrong way, but it's knowing yourself and knowing what is your zone. What is your flow zone? And when you get there, then you got to go, what are other things that quote unquote need to be done? If they need to be done, you're not willing to do it or you feel like it's always just so much weight and you've tried everything in the blue moon to figure out how you could do this thing. If it can't be eliminated, get help. And you think, well, I don't have enough money. I promise you, you'll never have enough money if you don't figure out how to get some help for free, for cheap, whatever. Because somebody who even is in the beginning stages who would be willing to do it for free but it is their zone of genius. It is something they actually genuinely enjoy doing. We'll do it far better and far faster than you, no matter how much time and energy you're putting into it, that you don't like doing it. Um, 
Love it. So rock and roll, rock and roll. I think that's going to be enough for today's Mind Tuner time for the public part of this. If you're on Zoom, you get to stay for the next hour and 20 minutes. Um, it may continue just like this. Sometimes people still don't, don't uh, need any coaching in that moment. And this is the coaching that they need. This is the support they need. Uh, but anybody who's not a paying client can stay on in Zoom. Um, and I will, if none of my coaching clients, you know, uh, want to raise their hand. Today's your lucky day. You can. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I always, I'm going to focus on, on them first, uh, but I allow you to still listen in. So, but anybody who's, you know, listening to this recording or is on Facebook, I'll be stopping that stream. And, uh, if you want to join in on the zoom, go to mindtuneuptimelive.com. You can register there to get in on the zooms. And, uh, I appreciate you all. This has been an incredible session. Again, all those on zoom, don't go anywhere. And, uh, I will talk to y'all in just a second. Otherwise I'll see y'all next week.